Well, hello gang, it's been a little while. So, today the reason I'm showing you the guts of my Blues Deluxe, you may have seen me do the recap job on this guy many moons ago, but it's also just collecting dust. After all my amp builds, I've had so much fun building new amps and doing cool stuff with other amps. This amp has become, in my opinion, tame and kind of boring. It's still a tube amp, still better than the average solid state in my opinion, but eh, you know, it just doesn't get used. Well, I happened across on the amp garage a particular a couple of guys that were doing a really cool thing. Um, so some of you might have been out kind of wondering how to kind of seek that Dumble Holy Grail tone. Well, they had decided that these amps quite often are not the most amazing sounding and aren't super expensive to buy. And then they could throw in a drop-in replacement board and you would be able to build a Dumble in it. So that is what my plan is to do with this one. I've had it since 19, I think 96 or 97. And, you know, it was my main amp for a while, but since I've gotten newer, better tube amps, I've just pretty much stopped using it. So, here we go. So this board is designed to be a drop-in replacement. It should have the same screw hole patterns that fit this board. And it will just slot in right here. And uh, we'll go over the schematic and everything, but it literally has kind of a component for component replacement for everything I'll need to make a dumble in this instead. Now, the original design came with a I think it's called a Blues Master, uh, but I'm going to be uh, replacing a lot of the component values in this to make the preamp the what's called the 183. Now the 183 had instead of the you know the the more this is actually 5881s, but this amp does support 5881s or six six V6s or six six L6s. I'm sorry, um, but this particular one I'm going to build the the 183 actually had EL34s, which is a British style power up so section, kind of like what you see in Marshalls. But, you know, that's fine with me. I'm, the, I'm just fine having the power amp the way it is. Uh, and I will set that up. Uh, we'll discuss that a little bit later as well. But effectively, a lot of what you do is just pull off all these, these leads that come from the transformer. Uh, and then you pull out everything here. And pretty much hole for hole, you can go through and enable the exact same features. So uh, I'll have a single input probably that I might change. Because there is a switch that doesn't really exist on here per directly. Uh, and we'll kind of go over that as well. But there's, you know... The, the amp here has a volume, a drive, treble, middle, bass, uh, master volume, reverb, and presence. Of all of those, the only one that's technically different is really the, the reverb is going to be gone. The order I'd like to keep since this, the, the knobs are, or everything is printed on this you know, filthy, dusty chassis that's not been used. So really, there is a master volume in the amp. The drive is going to be the drive. I'm going to control how much drive it is, but then there's also what's the reverb will be converted over to the overdrive level. So it's kind of like a volume for the overdrive as well. So that if you were engaging between the overdrive and not, you would end up getting, you can kind of balance the level either be the same, or if you intentionally wanted your overdrive to be hotter, you could raise it a little bit hotter as well. So the drive is just how much drive, and then this reverb, you know, since there won't be reverb anymore in this particular build, it will be replaced instead by the overdrive um, level. Then it still has a presence pot um, and it has a couple different switches uh, and we'll kind of go over that. I've got the schematic. Uh, the schematic and layout and everything that I have right now um, are from the, well I should say the schematic is from the um, Blues Master. So the components will be different. We'll be kinda, I'll be kind of you know, roughly going through the generics of some of the changes, not all of them. Uh, but I'm effectively also trying to help them by building them a, you know, like a, a bill of materials or what they call a bomb that will list out all the changes I've made to theirs to convert it over from uh, that to this. Now another thing that's kind of nice about this is that if you can kind of see right here, and we may have to do some close-ups of the board in a minute, but this is the um, spot for three different onboard potentiometers, just small trim pots that are going to be for what's called the HRM. Or I think they also call that hot rod modded, but it's effectively really just a tone stack for the overdrive. So your tone stack up here only handles the clean channel. Once you engage the overdrive, it's kind of, uh, they may not sound good anymore. And so, you know, your, your tone stack does still impact the tone coming into the amp and into the overdrive, but then the overdrive does change the character of the tone a little bit. And some people prefer to also be able to alter the way that sounded. So this, this HRM allows you to tweak that tone secondarily. So you've already tweaked it at the input in your clean part, and then once it gets to the overdrive, you can tune it a little bit more to fit more what you wanted that overdrive to maybe sound like as well. Uh, they're on the board on purpose because generally it's something that you don't want to tweak a lot. Uh, most people don't put that on the back. It's more of a, uh, the, the guitar player can kind of tune in what they like on the front for the general sound of the clean sound of the amp, and then the drive, they know that they always like a little bit more of some things or whatnot, but you know, so. That's, that is what it is, I guess. But ultimately, there's a lot of stuff going on this board, and the only thing really that's gonna be semi-solid state on this is there is still a small 
uh, section that we'll set up kind of over here and I might cover that again just by showing you a close-up of the board that's just to do the rectified power for the relays. So there'll be a couple relays that go on this board and they kind of fit over in this section that help do the channel switching between drive and clean as well as uh, you, you, know, you can also be switching what they call a preamp boost which lifts it or you can switch the um, there's kind of three three functions of this that are switchable. One of them is the preamp boost where you can kind of switch it on or off which what really does is mostly cuts out the tone stack so you get a lot more gain and a lot less cut out from that but you lose your tone shaping. Uh, you also have a, uh, a like a rock jazz switch, which allows you to kind of change the tonality of it being more of a rock sounding amp or a jazz sounding amp. Uh, it's a very subtle change, but you know, that, you know that, that's another cool tweak. And then the other switch is there, uh, there's a mid boost. And the mid boost lets you um, kind of give it a little bit more mid-rangey tone to it. So uh, the foot switch only effectively has the ability to switch two things. So you have to kind of choose that. We'll go over this maybe as a close up as well but you can choose if you want it to be the preamp boost or if you want it to be the, um, uh, the mid boost or the overdrive that you want it to kind of switch there. So, but we'll, why don't we take a second, we'll kind of close it, get a little bit more of a close up on this so you can get a chance to peek at what that looks like and we'll discuss that a little bit more. Okay, so to summarize effectively how this works, the, uh, there's a lot of great connections already built in here for me to mount for the board. So you can kind of see here, there's a couple of the main filtering capacitors that come in. We've got rectification right through here. Now the rectifier was designed with a, a kind of like one of those standard uh, vertical ones you can just drop in, but they've also added some capacitors that are sometimes used as kind of filtering on rectification that are just like 1K, I think they're like 0.1 uh, uh, microfarad or something like that. They're just small ceramic capacitors to help kind of with that. But oftentimes in tube amps, I don't think those are necessarily always used. And in this case, I want to just use some diodes I have, so I'm going to replace those with the diodes that I have. Um, but then we also have like, you've got your bias winding, your high voltage winding, you can redistribute your filaments through here, just bring in the, the filament voltages in and then send them off to the tubes. Choke, standby switch, we've got our foot switch connections. And then this is kind of a section that's kind of cool because the foot switch you decide, you can, since you only have two things you can use with foot switch, you choose either to do overdrive, preamp boost, or mid switch. And then you choose the tip and the ring, depending on which one you want there. And then you can also choose for the panel mount, which one the panel mount would be, um, uh, the only the panel mount works for it, which would in case usually be the one that you didn't use of the other two. Um, otherwise, when you switch things with the foot switch, it kind of disables the panel mount from working. So we've got the FX loop that's still there. So that will be the send and return for the FX loop. And then we have master volume, OD volume, OD drive, channel switching, the presence, the bass, treble, mid, and all the, uh, we'll kind of, I think I'm actually going off screen now that I've done that, but effectively, then there's a small section here that's gonna have a little bit of solid state circuitry to just take one of the windings. I think it might be the either the bias or something, but it takes the voltage off that and drops that down to the 12 volts for the relays and powers those. We have our kind of main output power right here to the output tubes, and these will be the kind of the, the screen resistors and then the filtering for those as well. Uh, and then I will slowly pan over here and get reset up to the shop to show you the other part of the board. All right, so the next section, I kind of was talking about up the top here, this is just a lot of the connections to the, the front of the panel, but here is your phase inverter. Uh, and so you would get, um, there's also one of the nice things that Dumble tends to do here is has a, a balance potentiometer so that you can kind of balance the output of the phase inverter. Uh, and these are the other resistors that come into that as well. So just for the anode, so you can kind of adjust the voltage drop coming into those. Uh, and then uh, the, the you just this will be all the components that go to the phase inverter and the connections that go off to that. Actually, that's the connections that go off to the phase inverter right here, I think, right? Yeah, so these ones here are a little bit different. They're, you're going to connect your output transformer center tap there. Your phase inverter ground is going to be connected through there. And then we also have a global negative feedback that will connect into there from, from the speaker jack. So, uh, and I believe, if I remember, this might be the resistor that comes from it as well, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll check that out when we get to that point. So again, I'll slide over and we'll go to the next part. So the final section here is really, we have two more triodes. This is the main input triode and this is the overdrive triode. Um, we have an overdrive kind of onboard pot that's to handle the level. And then as I mentioned, there's a, the, the three potentiometers that are for the tuning capabilities there. And these are all kind of what you can see, there's some larger capacitors for the filtering. And then up here we have the tone stack part that kind of will come off of this preamp and go off to the tone pots up and uh, above as well. So as you can see, this does cover on a PCB, a very high quality, well-designed PCB, 
how we could throw together a dumbbell without um, necessarily needing to understand how to build our own boards or do that kind of complicated turret board type setup if you're not used to that. This is literally a well laid out PCB with you know each capacitor and resistor marked so you'll know if you look at the thing which one goes where, you can solder those in. You could prep this board ahead of time, solder it up, and then slap it into the thing and connect it up as needed. So if you'd like to uh, follow along with me on this build, uh, please do. It'll be, I think, a good time for me and a good time for you as well. Uh, one other thing I'll note is the next step we're going to cover just a little bit is looking at the schematic like I mentioned and how it lists out all the components. If you want to do the stock Blues Master, it's already well documented and been built by several people. The 183, I do believe, has been built by one person but not super well documented, so I'm getting that as well. But the build process with any, any of these dumbbell style boards will be pretty much identical. So the next thing we'll look at really is just the kind of the, the schematics, the build materials, that kind of stuff. So back after the hop. Oh, everybody. So now we're looking at the schematic of this particular one. I'm, I'm going to try and kind of cover through it quickly. And then I will mention a, a few of the changes that I'm going to be making, but not cover it in detail. But this should give you the general idea of when looking at it, how things are working. So uh, the schematic here is the input. And the way they've drawn the triodes of each part of it is this little square block where you've got anode, grid, and, and cathode. And then the V1B or V1A, and then the, what type of tube it is. So you see one here, and then there's another one here. Uh, and the, those can be a little confusing because you also have your volume pots, but those are labeled a little differently. Um, but so effectively, um, the the anode is connected to 150K and a 2.2K with a 4.7 microfarad. And these are the cathode um, components. And then this goes into a tone stack with different components and values. And then those go off to this as a pot, you know, a treble pot, uh, a base pot, and a middle pot with a, this is a kind of a middle switching network with a small pot that goes on the board that allows you to do a little bit of a, uh, some of that mid adjustment as well um, that's like more of an onboard setting about uh, where the mid switch cuts things in and out. Um, here's the rock jazz switch connections uh, and, and each of the components. And the nice thing is we have a number, you know, C25 or R6 for all of these so that you'd be able to pull that up on the bill of materials uh, as well. And then also quickly look at and say, here's my 4.7 mega resistor that the bill of materials says and it goes in R6 and you go, oh, yep, there it is. So I am making some changes like the... Um, the 183 uses what's called the Skyliner or the high plate. And so this is like a 220 and I think this is a 3.3K. Uh, and similar here, this is a 220K and a 3.3K, et cetera. So there's some subtle changes. Also in the tone stack, these values are quite different. I don't remember them off the top of my head, uh, but I will probably be talking about them when I'm actually doing the build, et cetera. But as you can see, those are just, the general topology is identical. We have a, a triode that's the clean channel that comes in, goes through a tone stack. And then the preamp boost switcher here allows us to basically bypass um, the completely through the tone stack and allow us to kind of just move through uh, and I believe that's this one right here so effectively you're, you're kind of coming through this treble pot but or this treble bypass capacitor and this resistor but you don't hit the treble pot or any of the other ones that are in that chain because you just bypass um, the oh no actually this is I'm sorry I'm saying that wrong where is the I'm trying to remember where the preamp boost goes uh, it do, 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 I'm not seeing it off the top of my head right here um, but there's also, we have a bright switch up here with two components, so you can choose between two. Um, I think this might also just be when you're using the mid boost, it takes out this capacitor that's in the high end that allows us to, that's what it is, I'm sorry. So this is the mid booster. Uh, and this one down here, uh, this actually may very well, now that I'm looking at it, this may be the preamp boost. Because what it does is lifts the ground on the middle pot so that it no longer has a ground reference. And so this whole part of the circuit can't ground anything. And so instead it just goes straight through and the into the treble and through the wiper pretty much and so you have some treble effect here but the rest of this tone stack is pulled out uh, and so that makes a pretty significant difference to the tone um, then we have the um, volume of course that goes through a bright switch or straight through then we have a small kind of toning uh, network here that comes into the second half of this gain stage uh, which is kind of the recovery from the tone stack and then we go into a master volume the master volume connects into the network and if you've seen my dumble build you'll see this is very similar there's a these are what's going to connect into, uh, this is a kind of a switching network that switches between either going straight off into the uh, uh, master volume or from the master volume into the, um, oh, what is it called? Now let's slide over there and look at it so I can say the, uh, oh, the FX loop. So yeah, effectively, if you just come in straight, it goes to the effects loop and then the effects loop goes into the power amp. But if not, it cuts through um, and, it, and it sends the signal through this Another little bit of a tone shaping network here into a, the small trim that'll be on the board for the overdrive section. That's two 
pots as well. And we have a preamp boost. Now, one of the things that is ni and you'll, nice, and you'll see the notes here, if you don't want to use that, um, uh, this hot rod modded section or this little tone section that's designed for the overdrive, you can just jumper, uh, and they specify, don't populate any of the stuff through here and just jumper directly across at, at what's called P2. So what will happen instead is your tone will come through and jump across straight and out and you won't do the tone part. So, um, uh, and then it tells you not to populate all these lower ones. I think you still want the C40 and it jumpers across and you bypass all of this. Uh, if it's not jumpered here, then of course it works through and into the that way. So that's your ability to take that out if you don't want it. You then send to the effects loop. The effects loop comes in and connects into the phase inverter, which has a typical phase inverter set up for long tail phase inverter. Uh, and those are the connections that go off to the different uh, dia or the different parts of the, the tube. And actually, one thing I like is they do V3.6. That means that this is tube three V3, but the sixth pin. So it tells you exactly where to connect them. And they're also printed on the board. Uh, and then you have the kind of typical output of that that goes into a um, your global negative feedback, as I mentioned, and then through a presence pot and then through a cap. Um, but then the phase inverter goes into uh, the anodes here. As I mentioned, there's an actual bias pot as well, or not bias, but a pot here that allows you to adjust the phase inverter or balance those out so that you get a more balanced phase inverter output. Uh, you have your typical bias coming in here. We can look at the bias in a minute, and then there's just the output to your power tubes. I also mentioned the filament distribution part where you can connect in, you know, you'd connect your uh, transformer outputs to one and two, but then the other connections here can then go off to your different parts of the board that you might need them to as well. Here's the typical bias circuit. So the bias filament windings connect in right here and off. But this is where I was also mentioning, this is a typical bias, but we pull that off through a few diodes and into uh, what's called an LT1082CNA. And this is the voltage regulator that will, through going through this circuit, push us out 15 volts regulated. That is what controls all of the relays. You'll see they get a 15 volt in there. Of course, this is built into the board, so you don't have to do anything more than install the components and it does the rest for you. So. Uh, the one thing I might do is this is a kind of a typical eight pin socketed setup and I might buy an actual socket so I can pull those in and out easily as needed because it makes maintenance easier instead of having to desolder. If something goes wrong with this ever, I can just pull it out and drop another one in without needing to resolder it. Um, and then uh, through this part here, we'll also go back and quickly look at, this is the power rectification. We come in from that HT winding, we've got um, rectification, we've got the different levels of filtering. I will be emitting the standby, which means I'll just put a jumper through there, but um, uh, some people might like the standby. I don't, never been a fan of it. Um, I don't need it to mute. I can turn the volume off at my guitar or other places if I want to mute. The choke um, obviously would be pulled in and used. And then you've got just the different stages of filtering, B plus one, B plus two, B plus three, B plus four, and B plus five. Uh, another, th a really cool thing about this board is that they've put in a test point in a lot of different places right on the board. You can either just probe on the test point directly or they do give you an option. You can buy some small components that you can solder that will give you a nice loop to connect a kind of a clipping style into if you want to. I'm going to be leaving those open probably. Or I might kind of come up with my own DIY way to create a small loop with just some wire. I don't know, but we'll see. But I I don't think I need to spend the extra money for the test points myself personally, but that's my you know decision. Those capacitors I mentioned that are missing are um, that I will not be using. They also, even in this last revision, have said that they don't recommend you install them. I can't remember why, but I think they might have seen some weird problems with them. But... Uh, it might cause some extra stress down the line. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't want to speak to it, but they do recommend this particular uh, bridge rectifier you can just buy as a single component. But as I said, I will just basically replace all of these capacitors since I'm not using them with some standard 1N4007 diodes because I have a bunch of them in stock and there's no reason for me to buy something more. Another really cool thing here is they're using a, a style that the Dumble used that he would do what is called a precision power supply. I think it's called precision because buying these newer um, um, radial instead of axial capacitors, they're way cheaper, but still really high quality and also significantly better ESR. So they effectively are way better for audio purposes than what the older ones that people kind of think of these holy grail like Sprague Adams and whatnot. You can buy brand new Panasonic, Rubicon, Nichicon, some of these kind of brands that are just outstanding quality. But as these kind of you know PC style caps that you see that were the down the drop in type, use those instead and you get way better filtering and cleaner power. Um, and Dumble was a lot more about cleaner filtering power. He would push his components of these uh, to a highest value without it being detrimental to the amp to get as clean of a power as possible to get that nice clean tone. So, and then you have your typical dropping resistors in every case as well. Uh, and that pretty much kind of ties it all together. So 
This is a project I'm pretty excited about. I hope you guys will enjoy it as much as I'm going to enjoy building it. And we will hopefully come out with a pretty amazing app at the end. So thanks everybody for watching the video. Please give me a like, a thumbs up, a subscribe. Uh, hit that little bell for you to be able to get any notifications of new videos coming out. And uh, hey, I look forward to chatting with you more about it. Please give me some comments below about what you think about this build. Cheers.